How do you move forward after infidelity? What do you do with all the anger? What boundaries are needed? Whether you're the one who strayed or like me, you're the one that's been hurt, these struggles are real and they can absolutely feel overwhelming. But have no fear, I got you covered. At A Fair Recovery, we have amazing resources and people like me who have experienced a tremendous amount of pain. In this video, we're going to explore some important solutions. First, let's talk about boundaries. Healthy boundaries are essential after an affair to heal and to create a new foundation for your relationship. But how do you establish boundaries without sounding like you're trying to issue ultimatums? Allow me to set the scene for this video. My husband is hurt because of my actions. I'm trying to make it safe for him to talk to me, but it's really hard. He never wants to communicate. Even when I'm willing to do anything he asked, he still doesn't talk to me. I get so angry when he ignores me. I want to set some rules so he knows I'm serious, but I don't want to sound like I'm giving him an ultimatum. I want him to get better, but I'm tired of being treated badly. Now, this is where Rick, a licensed clinical social worker and founder at A Fair Recovery comes in. Let's see what Rick has to say. I believe it was Viktor Frankl who said between stimulus and response, between any event that happens negatively and how you respond, there's choice. And choice is what you have to look at here. You're either going to choose to see yourself as a victim of what's happened, his bad behavior, you know, his lack of motivation. I mean, it's almost like it's really easy to find and blame somebody else for what's happening in my life, finding co-conspirators who are going to sit there and support me and agree that, yes, this is horrible what he's doing. And I, I agree it's horrible what he's doing. I, obviously, you have worked really hard. And the sad thing is he's not choosing to follow at this point, it seems, from what you're describing, the same path that you've taken. But you also have a choice ultimately to be a victor and to rise above and to transcend even him so that your wholeness, your completeness, your life isn't dependent on what he does or what he doesn't do. That ultimately you get to be responsible for you and honest with yourself about how you are and how you want to be. Because the story you want to tell through this is how in spite of the fact that you made a mistake, you did these things and you grew. And even when he was like this, I still built something in my life that I'm really proud of. Suffering is really hard. I do believe that. I, and I hate that you're there. Um, being able to forgive him, forgiveness is only for the brave. It takes a lot of courage to be able to do that. I hope that he does take responsibility, but you really don't want to focus on the unfairness or the injustice of this because whatever you focus on is going to capture you. So you intentionally are going to have to focus on what you're grateful for. You're going to focus on what you're proud of in terms of your own growth. You're going to have to set goals for yourself in terms of your own growing. You've done a great job. At doing that, from what I hear, you've already done Hope for Healing, you've done individual counseling, you've done a lot of work. Don't stop there. Um, but I would advise don't focus on the unfairness or the injustice, and because that's only going to lead you to regrets and to resentments. Um, and it's hard because I understand it's not fair, but you want to be able to say, in spite of the fact that it was difficult, I was still able to do this. You know, so this is really a part about transcending where you've been. Hopefully he has enough integrity to come along with you. And I don't know what happens if you continue to heal and he doesn't. It may be at some point, even because even with the kids, that it's not something that could work. Stay mindful, stay in the moment, speak your truth. Hopefully, again, he's going to begin to take responsibility. He may never do it as you did it, 
But don't focus on that piece if you can find anything good in how he's responding. At least try to stay focused on those things. And at one level, you can transcend and you can be the victor rather than the victim in this situation. That was great advice from Rick. Setting boundaries does not have to be a fight. It's about creating clear communication and expectations for a healthier relationship. If this video is helpful to you, please check out the link for our free seven day bootcamp in the description below. But now let's move on to another common challenge, dealing with regret. Regret can feel so heavy, especially after a betrayal like an affair. We might dwell on what we could have done differently, leaving us feeling like we're stuck in the past. So how do we move forward and start letting go? I'm going to paint another scenario for you that was brought to us by a wayward woman and her husband when they were just about a year out from D-Day. D-Day being the day that she revealed her infidelity to him and has since been working really hard on her recovery, but reports her husband is not. Maybe some of you can relate. You're struggling with a spouse who's not doing the work. Maybe they're being passive aggressive, or maybe they're even turning to revenge behaviors and not appreciating the hard recovery work you are trying to do. Financial problems continue to add up along with all the lies. Listen to Rick as he responds to this woman struggling with how to know how to move forward with her husband. What he's doing is called stonewalling. And the problem with stonewalling is it sucks all the relational air out of the relationship. All you can do when someone stonewalls is, because they're disengaging, all you can do is show him you're trying to engage. Uh, and, and I usually recommend, you know, with them disengaging, if you can empathize, if you can begin telling them what you think they're feeling when they don't talk, um, at least they see that you're trying to connect. But it is a way, it, it can be its, its own way of trying to punish you. Something I would suggest is see if he will do one of the EMS online or EMS weekend. At least that would cause him to begin to communicate about all of this. I understand the problem with the boundaries. So what, what I would say is if you're going to do this, it's going to be awfully hard for us to have a relationship. And I think you really would like something, but I hear your pain. I mean, I know you're doing this because you're really hurt. Um, but I also know that me continuing to try to get you to talk isn't helpful either. So when you're doing this, you know, I'm going to go ahead and come over here and live well, enjoy the kids. Um, and just know that I'm ready to talk when you're ready to talk, but it's not going to be healthy for me to continue to try to get you to talk when you don't want to talk and then go live your best life. I think that setting that boundary and just telling him what you're going to do, you say, you know, you have a choice not to talk to me and my pursuing you isn't helping. If what you want is me to pursue or for us to connect, then I am really willing, welcome to all of that. I want to grow with you. Um, but the old pattern that I've been doing of trying to pursue, that's not going to be helpful. Something else you might try with him when, you know, you're trying to engage and he disengages, uh, you can tell him, look, there's nothing you're ever going to do to get me to quit loving you. And then the next time he does it again, you sit there and say, there's nothing you'll ever do to get me to quit loving you. And then the next time he does it, you say, there's nothing you're ever going to do to get me to quit loving you. Even if you're not going to talk to me, I still care and then say, when you're ready to talk, I'll be over here and then go live your life. But there will come a point at 18, 24 months, somewhere if he's not shifting, you can sit there and say, look, you know, I love you. Uh, you know, I want us, but my love isn't enough for you, which is why, you know, I'm kicking you out. I mean, I know that I did something horrible, but I can't fix you and my love isn't enough for you. You need something else. So we're separating. Uh, 
you really, it may come to that place. Because I do know that stonewalling, it is a form of abuse. You can call it for what it is. Um, I'm sure he'll argue and say, well, you abuse me, blah, blah, blah. And say, absolutely, I'm taking responsibility and trying to make things different. But I can't make you do that. And I still love you. But when you kick him out, as long as you're always telling him that no matter how much he stonewalls, and call it stonewalling, say, I'm still going to love you. Uh, but I can tell you, this isn't going to be healthy. So at least when you do separate from him or kick him out, at least he knows that you're not doing it because you're angry, but because you really care for him and you're not the solution to what's wrong with him. Letting go of regret isn't about erasing the past. It's about learning from it, focusing on the present and setting goals. Easier said than done, I know. Every time I heard someone say, look on the bright side, I would want to explode in rage. It is normal to feel these emotions. Anger can consume us and continue to hurt our relationships. It's okay to feel anger, but it doesn't have to control us. Learning healthy ways to express and manage these emotions is crucial. As you've heard, dealing with the aftermath of an affair is a really complex process, but you don't have to go through it alone. At Affair Recovery, we have a team of experienced therapists and a wealth of resources to guide you towards healing and a brighter future. If this video helped you, check out the links in the description below or visit us at Affair Recovery to learn more about our programs and find the support that you need to move forward.